So in this video, we're gonna talk about ring closure, you know, to form lactones and etc. Okay, so usually these are given with carboxylic acids and alcohols on the same chain. And we'll see that we'll form actually lactams using a nitrogen weight. Okay, so it so happens that if we if we switch the if we put this molecule in solution with with acid and heat, we'll actually get ring closure. So um for the product, I can count this as one, two, three, four, five, six. So we get a six-membered ring. Okay, so we get a six-membered ring. Okay, and this is your lactone. Okay. Lactones are usually in the cyclic compound general form like that. Well, how did it occur? Well, remember, we always say that if we throw uh, a carbonyl and acid, it's going to gain protonation. Okay, it's going to gain protonation. So if I look at this without going, join our arrows, we know that the arrow, okay, we're going to get a a oxygen that now has a proton and is positively charged. Now the lone pairs on the on the, the the alcohol will be very nucleophilic and so it will attack and form an alcohol. Okay? So we'll get a diol there. Now how many what's the what's the ring looking like? Well we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see it's a six membered ring with an oxygen being bonded to the carbon that contains two alcohols. So if that is true, then the structure should look something like this. Yeah, let's have this as our two alcohol. We know our oxygen is bonded directly to it, okay? And we just fill in our six membered ring. And listen, the idea is, if you always count it like this, you will never have to worry about where your, your numbers of carbon is. So notice I put number one as the actual stuff that is being bonded to the next one. So I didn't name this from carbon one. I started from what the actual bond is gonna be made. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know one is gonna be bonded to six. So I created a six membered ring. And so if I look at this, um, remember this initially had an, uh, an extra hydrogen. So this has a plus charge, okay? So if I look at this as one, Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and look, one is bonded to six. So again, if you always count the stuff from, uh, if you always put number one as the, the one that's been your nucleophile, then you get the amount of, the, you get the ring that, will, how much, how much stuff is in the ring. Okay, so how many carbons, etc. And then you just draw the bond. So that makes it way much more easier. Okay, so now that we, we've gotten to a structure like this, remember we formed water in the first step, okay? So we formed water whenever we gained this proton, and whenever we just gave, we took a proton from acid, so we formed water. And so water will come in, okay? And take all this proton and neutralize it, okay? And so we'll come to a structure that looks like this, okay? So we'll come to a structure that looks like this, pretty neutral. And then in the next in the next step, remember we just formed acid. Okay, so one of these oxygens will come in and get protonation. Okay, and reform water in solution. Okay, so once we reform water in solution, we're looking something at we're looking something like this. Now we have an oxygen that has two hydrogens plus one formal charge. Okay. And now we get the molecule to look something like this. And the next step, this is going to come in, form a double bond, and dispel water as a leaving group. Okay. And this is how we present our lactone. Okay. So that's just a simple mechanism. And now we're just going to go straight to predicting the products. Okay. So what if I actually throw this molecule in solution? with acid what if I throw this molecule in solution with acid what would I get well remember we said that alcohol is always more reactive than the the alcohol adjacent to the carbonyl and so this will be a nucleophile okay this will get protonation and so we're going to form a bond between the 
the, the, the carbonyl compound, yeah? So if I'm looking at this, we're gonna get something, we're gonna form a five-membered ring. So we're gonna get this, that's bonded to an oxygen. We still have our carbonyl, okay? And we get our five-membered ring that looks like this, okay? And we form our lactone. Now, again, I'm just going to straight to predicting the products. But if you could notice the pattern here, whenever this oxygen attack, uh, remember, uh, you know, so, so I'm just going to skip ahead a step here. But remember, the first thing that happens is protonation. Okay, so we're going to get an oxygen that is positively charged. Now, this attacks and it's going to kick the bond off. So we're going to get an alcohol. We're going to get an alcohol. So we're going to get two alcohols on this carbon. And remember, likewise in this step, once we get two alcohol, one gets protonation and form water, and then we just form the ketone. So here's the idea. Once we form the two alcohol, one is going to get protonation. We form the ketone and we, we form the ketone. And so that's why we just get the ketone here and we just have that, that ring closed. Okay. And let's go through some more so, so you could see the, the pattern here. Okay. What if I took this? What if I took this molecule and add acid? Yeah, in heat. What will I get? Well, again, remember, the first thing that happens is protonation. So, and maybe, um, you know what, I should just go through the mechanism of this one. Okay, so the first thing that happens is protonation. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which one in this case. No, actually, yeah, it doesn't matter which one. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. So it doesn't matter. So it's going to attack and gain protonation, okay? So now we have an oxygen that has a plus charge. There's your, another alcohol. And there's your ketone. There's your alcohol. Now that this has gained plus charge, now that this has gained a plus charge, the oxygen adjacent, the oxygen, the other oxygen adjacent will attack. So this will now attack the carbonyl. Okay, that will now attack the carbonyl and form the double alcohol in that carbon. And so if I'm looking at this, what will be the structure? Well, the structure looks something like this. We'll come to an intermediate that looks that looks something like this. Now we got a counter carb. Now we got a counter or, or, or bond. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So is everyone okay with that? We're gonna form a five-membered ring. We're gonna form a five-membered ring. And a good shortcut of seeing how the structure is gonna pin down is just to draw a line straight from the oxygen to the to the carbon that's gonna be that is gonna be bonded to. And now you can see that it's definitely a five-membered ring with two alcohols beyond this carbon. So if I'm looking at this, it looks something like this. Here's our two alcohols on this carbon that we just formed. Okay. There's our carbon with our ketone. And we have our, we have our, we have our uh, oxygen right there. Okay. Now remember, our oxygen still has this proton here. Yeah. So that means it has a plus one formal charge, right? This proton. It's right here. Okay, so this oxygen still has a plus one from the charge. Now remember, we form water in solution. So this will come in, attack, and neutralize the molecule. And so we come to a structure that looks like this. Clever diol on this on this carbon here. Okay, and then what's going to happen next? One of these oxygen is going to get protonation from the alcohol. So an acid is going to get protonation. Yeah. It's going to get protonation. And so we come to a structure that looks like this. We have one that has now water as a leaving group and we still have our, our alcohol group. Yeah. So now what's going to happen next step, this bond is going to come and form a double bond and displace the water as a leaving group. Okay. And we come to a final structure that looks something like this. A greater ketone. There's our oxygen. We also have another ketone. There's our oxygen. So this will be the final product. Okay. So hopefully you could see the pattern here. 
Okay, it doesn't matter if it's a carboxylic acid or an alcohol. Once we form the bond, we're going to get two diols. We're going to get two alcohols on one group. And one of those you're going to leave as water to actually give you back the ketone. Okay, now, this chemistry also, it just doesn't happen with, it doesn't only happen with carboxylic acid and alcohol. It also happens with nitrogens too. So if I take this molecule here, and throw it in acid, what would happen? We know it's going to ring close, but what will happen? Well, again, we know that anytime we throw a carbonyl in acid, we're going to get protonation. And so if I'm looking at this, H3O+, plus, well, it's going to simply seek the hydrogen and form water in solution. And so we come to a stop point. It looks like this. There's my hydrogen plus one formal charge. There's my alcohol group. Now remember, nitro the nitrogen now has two lone pairs on it. So it's going to attack and form the diol on that carbon. Now, how many rings, how many bonds, what's the ring looking like? How many things are going to be in the ring? Well, <coughs> excuse me, starting from the bond, we starting from the nuclear file, this is one, two, three, four, five. So we know we're going to form a five-membered ring with one being bonded to five. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I have my nitrogen. My nitrogen has um, two hydrogens, okay? It's bonded to a carbon that has two alcohols. Yeah, it's a five membered ring. So there's my five membered ring. Now nitrogen, we know have four bonds that automatically have a plus charge. And if you want to look at the carbons and the ring structure, well, remember we said nitrogen was one or nucleophile was one. And here's carbon two. So here's carbon two, three, four, five. And remember we said one is being bonded to five. Okay. So in the next step, water is going to come in and act as a base. Take off on these hydrogens and give nitrogen that. And so we come to a structure that looks like this. We have our nitrogen that now has one hydrogen. And we have our diol. And look again. What's the pattern? One of these are gonna one of these is gonna gain protonation from acid. And so one of these is gonna gain protonation. Okay, and we come to a structure that looks like this. We have water now. We have this OH group here. Yeah. Oxygen, three bonds plus one formal charge. Yeah. So this is going to come in, form the double bond, and displace water's leaving group. And so we come to a final structure that looks something like this. Yeah. Now this is called a lactam. Okay. Now this is the difference between lactone and lactam. Lactone, we have the, the, the O. Lactam, we have the nitrogen. Okay, so you can see that these chemistries are very similar. Okay, these chemistries are very similar. And so we should be able to predict these from, from the simple mechanisms that, that we went through. Okay, so again, if I gave you this compound here, so if I gave you. Yeah, so if I gave you this compound here, and we decided to add it in acid, you gotta be able to give them the structure immediately. Okay, and we know this is gonna be a nucleophile, this isn't gonna protonation. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So immediately we know we're gonna form a six membered ring. So if we're looking at this, we're gonna form a six membered ring. So maybe we could put a nitrogen here, and this will be our ketone because that initially had a diol. Not a ketone, but our, but our um, or carbonyl. And so here is our six member ring. I lost one hydrogen, so there's my product. Okay, we gotta be able to come to this immediately. And you could see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's six. Remember it has a diol, but one gain protonation, leave as water, and that's where we get our ketone, uh, that's where we get our carbonyl, and then we have that, which will form our lactam. Okay, so nothing difficult, um, simple chemistry.